Hello all, uh, my name is Sai Krishna. I am the editor of InfoSec Writeups and uh, I am also the founder and CEO of uh, Hackroo. It's a cyber security startup based out of India. So yesterday on 4th of October, we know that Facebook has suffered a major outage and all of its uh, services like WhatsApp, Instagram and all the other services that are relied on Facebook are down for almost like 6 hours. Uh, so I wanted to know more on like what caused this outage and uh, what exactly happened and uh, if it could have been prevented and uh, more details on that. So I thought why not uh, invite Venkat Arun, who is my friend and uh, he is a research scholar uh, working on researching on networks uh, in MIT. Uh, so this is his uh, Special, special, he's a specialist in when it comes to network. So I wanted him to uh, guide us all on like what happened and uh, why it happened. Hello, Venkat. Uh, Hi. So please, uh, you know, get us through like you know what happened and please explain it in a layman terms. What caused yeah, the so Facebook outage? Yeah. Please you asked ahead. me to do this uh, since I'm an academic, I made slides. So here. <laughs> That's so sweet of you, come on. <laughs> so, as you know, when you try to visit facebook.com on your web browser or phone app or whatever, your computer talks to another computer that's owned by Facebook. And like these Facebook's computers are housed in these big warehouses with thousands of computers and they're called servers and the, the warehouse is called a data center. And your phone or laptop sends it a message, say, give me my text, give me my messages. Hmm. And then Facebook's computer responds with all the information your phone needs hmm. to render that text in your screen. Hmm. And this communication happens over the internet. Yeah, and, uh, know. I'm pretty sure the internet is uh, not a big blue cloud that is sitting between me and <laughs> the Facebook servers, right? It's not. It's instead a bunch of orange blobs. Okay, what are these orange blobs now? Well, these are routers which are essentially computers that connect with other computers. And at the edges of these network are like your computer, for instance, on the left, or you know, Facebook or Google's these big companies' computers or computers that host websites. So the internet is basically made up of like a bunch of routers. And these are also interconnected with each other. For example, like my Wi-Fi router, right? It's connected to some other router and that is connected to another router. And they all magically talk to each other. And they know yeah. where Facebook is, where Google is, where everything is in the internet. Yeah. Interesting. How does that happen? Well, the first thing you need to do when you have something like this is give everybody names. Yeah. So computers have names that look like this. Like my computer today happened to have the name 18.31.7.218. Mm. Um, so does Facebook. So if you want, if my computer wants to send a message to Facebook, mm. it will create a message like this, which basically in the two address, it has Facebook server's name. Mm. And the message says, give me my messages so that mm. I can look at my texts. Mm. And then the routers know how to send it to Facebook. Yeah, but we don't type that number on our browser right right we want to type something nice looking like facebook.com yeah something we can remember yeah yeah and the way it works is that there's this address book on the internet and your computer first and your computer knows the the name of the ip address of this address book and it sends facebook.com to this address book and now this address book is going to respond with the IP address of the computer that you should be talking to in order to reach facebook.com. Okay, but having like a one single address book for the whole internet sounds like a really bad idea and it's a, like a single point of failure, right? Yeah. Uh, so the way we handle that is instead of having just one address book, your computer talks to a local address book, which then talks to a slightly less local address book and this less local address book talks to more than just one local address book. And then this again talks to address books maintained by either one of these companies or you know if you register your own domain name then this less local address book will have your address as well so it's an it's arranged in this hierarchical structure so that there is no single point of failure okay so basically whenever facebook creates let's say a new service uh, then they update in their own address book and then 
every other address book gets a copy of it so how does that happen well they can just push whatever changes they want to the other address books okay alternately if like an address book for instance the less local address book hasn't heard from facebook in a while huh. then we will assume that the data it has is outdated so it'll ask it again okay so by the by in a way all of these are in a way synchronized over time yes okay and what happened yesterday was that the internet forgot how to reach facebook address book oh so, and why did that happen how can that happen well it shouldn't happen but the way it happened is the following so the internet is managed by a number of entities hmm. and one way to classify those entities is through autonomous system so an autonomous system is an entity like for instance your isp hmm. is an entity an isp is an internet service provider and your laptop is inside that isp because you pay them money so that you can be inside their isp okay and there are also other isps like at&t and uh, reliance geos hmm. uh now in principle there are about 80000 separate autonomous systems on the internet hmm. but in practice there are a small number of very big companies that operate the biggest autonomous systems okay oh i see that we have here microsoft aws facebook google interesting yeah so if you're big enough you basically want to operate your own autonomous system Mm. not universally true but kind of true mm. and so for instance inside facebook's autonomous system would be its address book mm. and its uh, servers mm. and so the point of all this is your internet service provider mm. or indeed any autonomous system knows how to how to route information inside of themselves because they have all the information mm. but across in autonomous systems people don't want to share information that freely hmm. so they use something called the border gateway protocol or bgp hmm. Hmm. to exchange this information so for instance facebook will advertise to all of its neighbors that you know if you send data to me i hmm. can get you to facebook's address book and facebook's web server okay and google will do a similar thing and so will everybody else hmm. and now uh, you know AT&T for instance is an ISP mm. so it doesn't necessarily have content on its own mm. but it it wants you to reach other people through it because mm. when you do that you pay AT&T some money mm. so AT&T will say if you send data to me mm. i can get you to facebook or google servers mm. and also microsoft servers and whatnot mm. now what happened yesterday was that facebook suddenly stopped advertising that you can reach it and as a result at&t also stopped advertising that you can reach its address book huh. so basically everybody forgot how to reach facebook and that's how facebook suffered this 6 hour outage yesterday so basically all the servers databases everything is still running on the facebook data centers but it's just that the internet forgot how to interact and find these servers somehow yeah most of the internet most of facebook was functioning as normal but somehow due to just one small failure everything broke down oh <laughs> and interesting and uh, the communication between these autonomous systems happens uh, through uh, bgp right yeah so can you tell us a little bit more about what bgp is and uh, uh, how it communicates with the, how these autonomous systems communicate with each other right so bgp is just a protocol that is designed to let people share information about where everything is okay and this is not the first time that a problem with bgp has caused a large chunk of the internet to go down so all of this information that we just discussed uh came from some analysis done by cloudflare so they post, they made a blog post detailing what happened hmm. and we don't know that much about why facebook stopped transmitting Uh, its address books location yeah i can only assume that this was not intentional because the only person who's harmed in all of this is facebook yeah. so they probably won't want to sabotage themselves and what probably happened is you know any big company keeps making changes to its systems on a daily basis of course and mm. these changes are made by humans who are 
you know, error prone. Yeah. And presumably some uh, engineer made a mistake and they pushed an incorrect change. And yeah. I can only imagine what kind of horrors that, that engineer is facing. <laughs> Uh, normally, you should you would have safeguards. Like if a human makes mistakes, there would be some automated script that catches. Oh wait, this is a mistake. You should not be you know pushing this change. Yeah. But presumably, somehow that safeguard didn't work. Yeah. Uh, somebody overlooked a particular way in which something can break and and uh, everything broke down. Yeah. Talking about humans making mistakes, exactly like how I did. It, I forgot to record this uh, video earlier when we <laughs> had this call. and i have to do it again thank you so I much for bearing with me <laughs> and yeah and also talking about uh, bgp issues right so uh, in the past also i heard about so i read about uh, so in russia uh, there was an issue where there was a bgp hijacking and uh, so basically uh, there was a cryptocurrency exchange and uh, people were made to believe that uh they were visiting the cryptocurrency exchange but where in uh, in reality uh, the bgp has been hijacked there and so the hackers made a lot of a ton of money there and um, also i remember that there was a case in pakistan which tried to block youtube and uh, they published uh, the a bgp update or something and uh, uh, something and, and it ended the youtube didn't work for uh, a lot of uh the world population in that time as well yeah basically pakistan said if you want to send anything to youtube send it to me and their intention was to then just just not send people it inside pakistan else. but it kind of propagated everywhere so everybody was like uh trying to send information to pakistan and, and the fun the, the fundamental problem is twofold first bgp is designed on trust okay so if someone says that you, you can send data to me and i'll reach it to the destination mm. everybody else kind of trusts that person mm. and secondly this is a clear case of computers not having common sense mm. they're going to do exactly what you tell them what do, yeah <laughs> so in the end and, it's us <laughs> it's on us yeah if is the programmer at the time didn't think of this weird eventuality that would happen yeah then the computer just does the stupid thing it doesn't know to not do it and i also read on uh, twitter that you know because facebook everything inside facebook even the internal tools all of them are tied down to uh, facebook domains so even they couldn't access these uh, servers remotely to uh, change the settings and there were some some people were even having uh, trouble accessing uh, rooms using the key cards because the login is somehow tied to their facebook which is <laughs> very interesting <laughs> Yeah it's a big lesson for us we shouldn't let our physical spaces be fully controlled by the cloud like there has to be a sort of physical override yeah that we we'll able to open a door with a key even if the cloud thing doesn't work yeah uh, yeah and i am i i i am assuming like these kind of issues uh, though it sound like you know they do not happen a lot they must happen a lot Yeah, they happen a lot. Like a few months ago, Google had a similar failure where some config change caused everything to break and nothing at Google worked. Uh, Interesting. So yeah, and it does like make us ask a lot of questions about how we can make the internet more robust to these single point failures or you know somebody just changing a config file somewhere shouldn't bring down the entire internet. Hmm. But today that's the way it is, and hopefully we'll be able to solve this problem. And also, it's a it's maybe. right now the internet is dominated by a very small number of very large companies mm. and that is contributing to this single point of failure problems mm. uh, so we need like a more democratized uh, internet at least distributed distributed yeah, yeah. so that was very informative venkat uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, on such a short notice and uh, i know that you do research in lots of other interesting areas which i wanted to talk from long time so hopefully this is not the last time that we are seeing you uh, talking with us um, i am very excited to talk to you about all the other research you are doing as well so thank you so much for uh, coming and explaining it in a very simple way to us Yeah, thanks for having me over. This was a very fun time to spend the morning making these slides with you. Yeah, and nights <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, night for you. All right. Thanks.
Thanks, Vanget. Bye. See ya.